It's been a long time since I've been excited about a desktop PC. I mean, it's 2017 and desktops haven't been cool since like the Bush administration. But then this happened. This is the Microsoft Surface Studio. It's a desktop for people who draw and design and make videos and generally do things other than just use a mouse and keyboard on their computer. It is a desktop PC, but it's also a drafting table. It starts at three grand and goes up quickly from there. That's a lot for any computer. But if you were ever gonna yell, shut up and take my money at a computer, it'd probably be this one. I mean, come on, look at it. It's actually not quite as powerful as you might expect, given the price. It starts with a Core i5 processor, eight gigs of RAM, and a terabyte of hybrid storage. Those are laptop specs, and not even particularly impressive ones. You can spec it all the way up to crazy things like 32 gigs of RAM, but even the $4,200 model still doesn't have all solid state storage. The saddest spec is the graphics. You're getting a good NVIDIA graphics chip, but not the newest one, and you'd want all the power you can get just to make this screen run smoothly. It's 28.125 inches, 4800 by 3200 in resolution. As is, you can play most games, as long as you're not on super high settings, but this is never going to be a VR machine or even an awesome way to play Resident Evil 7. And in case it's not obvious from the design, you can't open and upgrade this machine. For normal use, even apps like Photoshop, there's plenty of power here. And this screen is really remarkable. It has a 3-2 aspect ratio, which means it's a little taller than your average screen. This thing is, to use a technical term, stupid huge. You could see a dozen apps at a time if you wanted, but I really like just putting one app full screen and working in it. It's peaceful, you know? Just as cool as the screen itself is what you can do on it. When you have it up like this, it feels like a normal desktop. But you can slowly pull it down into that drafting mode and the giant touchscreen just comes right up under you. You can use the included Surface Pen or your fingers and it just becomes the biggest tablet you've ever seen. The studio's hinge holds it pretty steadily at any angle, which is really impressive. And the whole process just feels so intuitive. You sit down, use the awesome Windows Hello feature that logs you in with face recognition, then pull the screen towards you and go straight to work. As you can see, the whole minimalist brushed silver aesthetic looks pretty great on your desk. Since the screen has to move up and down so much, all the computery parts are actually in the base back here. That's where all the ports are too in the back. It's nice to have all those ports, but it's super awkward that they're all all the way back here. Sadly though, that's just par for the course for these beautiful all-in-ones. When it's down like this is really where the studio becomes something new and different. It's meant to be touched and drawn on, swiped around and made all gross and fingerprinty. I put ours on a desk in our office and people just kept wandering over to it, grabbing the pen and just going to work. We all found some pretty interesting bugs in apps like Photoshop and Illustrator where little things don't work the way they should. But it all seems like normal bugs after a new thing comes out. In general, the whole setup is amazingly powerful and accurate and just fun to use. In keeping with the focus on creatives, Microsoft also released a new accessory, the Surface Dial. The idea is that you'll be able to change settings, tweak colors, and all of that, so that drawing and working becomes a two-hand touch kind of experience. It's really clever, but not many apps support it yet, so I just use it to change volume in Spotify which is probably not worth the hundred bucks just yet. For a lot of people, everything about the Surface Studio is total overkill. But it's the beautiful, wonderful, I want it really bad kind of overkill. And if you're an artist or an architect or just someone who's happier with a pen than a mouse, the Surface Studio is sort of perfect. It's cheaper than buying an iMac and one of Wacom's Cintiq tablets, which is what a lot of people already do. And this is better than that. It's more integrated, more natural. It's the best monitor I've ever used with the touch and the hinge and all those freaking pixels. There are some bugs in the whole setup, plus some first generation weirdness that Microsoft has to work out, like those graphics. But Microsoft set out with the Surface Studio to build a device that creative people will love, that they might even consider buying over whatever Apple product comes out next. And you know what? They kind of nailed it. <laughs>